All right, everybody. Let me know how I sound. I already know that the audio is not going to be as good as it is as when I used my regular microphone, but I do want to try out these new AirPod Pros that I got specifically for my phone, um, but I do want to see how they serve for a live stream. I did uh, some testing earlier where I was just doing some recordings um, just to see um, what, what they sound like. I know it probably sounds a little more echoey uh, than um, uh, versus it being crisp. Now, I already see some comments about it being slightly muffled. Um, that is because most likely of my filter that I have on. So I'm just going to turn the filter off. And then what do I sound like now? When the filter is turned off, I probably should sound a little louder. But the concern that I have is what the clanging of the balls or the, the tip hitting the cue ball um, is going to sound like. And this is all for me to kind of experiment as to when I actually get an actual microphone that I hang from the ceiling uh, uh, to be able to hopefully pick up the sounds um, as well. I'm, I'm kind of expecting similar results, but I, 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 don't, I don't really know. And I see Astrofish says that I, I sound like I'm speaking on a phone, which, I mean, they're, they're Bluetooth earbuds. I, I guess it would. Um, I guess it would sound uh, just like that. Versus when I have a microphone right here next to my mouth. Like I said, there's a there's a clear distinction uh, between between the sound, really. So I think though, based on some of the experiments that I've done, I'm going to turn the filter back on because when the balls start clanging around, uh, that's when things are going to be a little bit different. And I certainly don't want anybody's um, ears to get blown out. Uh, that's for sure. But as I said in the chat, I'm going to try these out, you know, maybe for the first set of a, first set of attempts. Um, that way, everybody has a chance to, to hear them out, hear how the balls sound, hear how I sound while I'm out there. And what I'm also really interested in is when I go back and watch my previous live streams and I have that other um, headset microphone on, every now and again, I can hear this staticky tick sound. Uh, that comes in through the comes in through the microphone, and it's really annoying. And there's nothing I can, I can there's nothing I can do about it uh, from my end, considering that I'm using Bluetooth. But since this is true Bluetooth over the air straight to the computer, I, I'm actually curious if um, if there's going to be that staticky tick sound. Uh, so I'm obviously trading a little bit of audio quality since I'm not going through the auxiliary port. This is just straight over the air, and I did learn real quick. Uh, that um, because I'm doing Bluetooth over the air, there was actually some sound delay, meaning that when I watched the recording of me playing, I can see that I would hit the ball, the ball would go into the pocket, and then like shortly after that, that's when I would hear the sound. So I had to do some, I had to do some uh, like, what is it called, like sound offsetting to make sure that I get it in place to where like the moment I hit the ball is the moment you're going to hear the, the clacking of the ball sounds and stuff. So hopefully that's, that's what we're going to see here tonight. But then when I switch over to my, when I switch over to my other microphone, you're going to hear a complete difference. Um, and we, we, we already know, um, we already know what that sounds like. So that's what it's going to be. <clears throat> All right. So a couple of announcements. Uh, the first one being um, about my giveaways. Um, I did check my analytics, and it looks like we're going to be okay. Um, what I am going to end up doing in the future is when I end up doing live streams, or no, when I end up doing other types of giveaways, especially product review uh, giveaways. Because if I do a contest giveaway, that's a contest giveaway. Like my 75,000 subscriber poison package, I'm... I, I've had that I've had that for like I don't know how long. Right? So that that's already well done and paid for. But if I go and buy a queue to do a product review, um it, it's not like I, I expect the queue to be paid for, but at least enough to where like I don't take a huge loss and then of course I have uh some money to be able to pay for the shipping, especially if I have to pay for it to go overseas. So if the product review video by itself can't do it, well, then all the live streams that I do after that or even other videos that I do after that 
as long as they bring in the revenue that covers the cost of the queue, then there's no reason for me to try to sell raffle tickets. I can still pretty much do future giveaways like I've been doing my current giveaways. So as far as Predator BK Rush, we're good to go. And as far as the next type of product review giveaway that I, uh, that I might end up doing, it'll still be the, the same old giveaway process. We'll just probably end up doing like some sort of, you know, another, another type of live stream show uh, to go along with it, whether I'm still doing straight pool or maybe doing something else. But who knows? We'll see. We shall see. All right. So I'm not going to waste any time. Oh, I, I did forget. Um, I forgot. If you looked at my uh, community wall uh, on my uh, channel, um, I did release uh, the um, program that I use to keep track of my score. It is a Windows application, so it only runs on PC. Um, I can certainly build a Java version if I have any Mac users out there. Um, and I don't know if I want to try to go down the realms of doing mobile development. I'm sure there's already like a mobile app out there that will like that you can use to keep track of your scores. I just don't think there's a mobile app out there that does basically what my program um, essentially does. So um, feel free to download uh, download the program, uh, use it. Let me know if there's any issues. Let me know if there's any features that you would probably want me to try to add. Um, and of course, if you're a developer, you know, feel free to um, download the community version of Visual Studio, make some code changes, and if you want to submit them as a as a pull request for me to merge into my changes, then you know we can we can certainly try to accommodate that. So that way, this program becomes our little program. Um, it's not going to be the first uh, program that I ever built uh, to be able to use um, for some sort of pool related stuff. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's there. So we can uh, try to go from there because uh, I mainly built it not only to, for, you know, to keep track of my stats, but, you know, I, it also integrates with how I use my, um, my OBS team because I show four different scores, the, the current score, the current best, the average, and the record. Because my program writes those values to a file and then my, uh, I configure my OBS to use uh, text sources that read from those files. That's how my program basically inter integrates with um, OBS. It's not like it's a direct integration where I'm going from program to OBS. I'm actually going from program writing to a file that OBS reads. So that's pretty much the connection there. So if you end up having to be a uh, streamer as well and you want to be able to um, use the program to, sh you know, to, uh, to feed your OBS uh, scenes as well, I mean, that's, that's the reason why I built it. So we can be able to go from there. All right, so I think that pretty much does it. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and run through some attempts here. So let me know, well, when I get back, you can let me know how uh, everything sounds. So hopefully uh, the break isn't going to sound too terribly loud. <clears throat> but then after I get done with my first set of attempts, then we'll switch back to the regular microphone. All right, so just like before, in my first couple of attempts, I will attempt to break down everything and like kind of make it like a lesson uh, thing. So, you know, you know, what you saw was the opening break shot where I can take an object ball, or which is typically going to be the head ball, uh, place it anywhere on the table and shoot it in. I have to try to drive the cue ball into the rack to open it up like this. And so the first thing you wanna do, especially if you get a result like this off of the break, um, is establish a ball that you want to use to be the, the break ball for the next rack. And that's typically going to be a ball somewhere around here. So when you look at this layout, I've got a couple of candidates. The 13 ball is a really good candidate because I can cut the 13 ball into this corner pocket, especially if I have a back cut angle, and you can see how the cue ball will just drive naturally into the rack to open it up. I also have the one ball that I can cut into the corner pocket, basically do the same thing. And even the 14 ball could be one, even though it's a little bit further away. <clears throat> even the six ball could be one because I can cut it into the side pocket and try to go into the rack this way. But usually you're going to see how the balls that are on the side of the rack are going to be the most common one. So we're pretty much going to try to stick with uh, these three. Now what that means though is, is that as I'm building a pattern, these are balls that I'm going to want to ignore. Ignore meaning that I don't want to shoot them in let alone I don't want to bump into them because I don't want them to move from where they're at. 
So once you identify your break balls, then you want to look for what's called the key ball, which is the ball that you shoot in before the break ball because that's how you set it up. So if you think about it, if I'm going to use the 13 ball as a break ball, what ball would be a potential key ball? Most likely you can look at this 8 ball, right? Because if I get some sort of position over here, I could shoot the 8 ball into the side pocket, allow my cue ball to just follow forward a little bit to about this position here, and that allows me to shoot the 13 ball in and then drive the cue ball into the rack. And so if I were to look at the 1 ball, the 2 ball would possibly be the key ball. I shoot it into the side pocket, maybe with a little bit of draw or a stop shot, and I have that similar back cut angle to go into the corner pocket and drive the cue ball in the rack. The two ball also serves as a good key ball for the 14 ball here as I allow the cue ball to roll forward a little bit. That way I have a similar back cut angle from a farther distance to allow the cue ball to come into the rack. So really now I have five balls on the table that I pretty much don't want to touch um, if I can. So I pretty much try to build a pattern around all of that. Now, once we're done with all that, then we've got to figure out, well, what are, are there any issues on the table? Well, typically in straight pull, any ball that's past the side pocket is, is labeled a troubled ball. So like these two balls out down here are basically troubled balls. So I, sometimes I might want to try to deal with them as soon as I possibly can. I mean, they're not too big of an issue because I can just pretty much make them almost whenever I want. But really, I would love to just play half table pool, right? Because then my cue ball movements are going to be really small, which are easier to control. So you identify that, then you start looking at balls that are on the rail or near the rail, especially balls that are fro if they're frozen to the rail anywhere on the, t anywhere on the table. So those are uh, balls that are hard to deal with because, one, they only have two pockets that they can go into, which is typically going to be the corner pockets. And then usually controlling the cue ball is a little bit difficult as you instantly run into the rail and hardly have any time to try to get any side spin work for you. So this is kind of an issue here that I might try to deal with as soon as possible. So I've got this ball and these two. Then I got to look at, are there any balls on the table that are blocking other balls from going into pockets? So not necessarily clusters. Clusters are obviously an issue. I don't really have a cluster here. But when you look at this four ball, for example, it can't go anywhere. I mean, maybe it can go over here if I were to stick the cue ball in between the three and the nine. But if we look at the three ball or the ten ball, if I move the three, if I pocket the three ball, into this corner pocket, well, then that opens the pocket up for the four ball. So now I can shoot the four ball. Same goes if I were to move the 10 ball. If I shoot the 10 ball in this corner pocket, now this corner pocket is open for the four ball as well. So those are things that I would look at to where it's like, it's not like I have to break this apart. I just have to create a path for them to go. So I want to basically try to shoot balls that are in the way and get them out of the way. So I hope all that makes sense because that's pretty much the analysis that you'd want to do right after you break the balls open. So what I'm going to do here is try to maintain the five balls that I identified for my break balls and my key balls. And then after I get down to where like I have a, you know, probably six or seven balls left, maybe, maybe less than that, maybe down to the last five, then I'm going to switch into what's called end pattern mode, which is where I want to try to peck off the remaining balls in a very specific order with a very controlled cue ball to hopefully get that good angle on the break ball. So let's see how this goes. Now, in straight pull, it's normally call ball, call pocket. But when I'm doing a um, fairly obvious shot, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, announce what uh, what it is. I'm just going to go ahead and shoot it in. <clears throat> now, if I do something uh, that's not so obvious, like a bank shot or a carom shot or a combo shot or you know whatever, that's what I'll be announcing. So we can see here that I'm pretty much going to deal with this troubled area here. All right, because now I can return back up table and I'm only playing half table full. All right, so off to a slow start. That's only a five. 
So how did the how did the audio sound on that? Anybody let me know? Before I go on to the, the second attempt, does does it sound a little is it is it louder than, than it usually is and does it sound echoey? <clears throat> Okay, I got it. It's an okay. Less than I, I expect it to be less than good than than when I have the microphone uh, next to my mouth. It's not bad. Okay, I, I'm I'm expecting this. It, it's expected as long as it's not terrible. So it, it hopefully gives me a gauge of what an actual microphone is going to look like when I suspend the microphone up here and I'm walking around the table and hopefully that microphone is actually uh, good enough to pick up, you know, the, the sounds of the balls uh, clanging around, uh, pick up my voice without me having to raise my voice or anything like that. <clears throat> That's pretty much what I'm going to be looking for. Because in all actuality, these ear pods feel more comfortable than me having a wire that goes down my shirt to, uh, to the transmitter and then, of course, having the, the hooks on my ears to, to hold the microphone next to my mouth. These AirPods are more comfortable. So the, the other microphone you know, doesn't really bother me because I've already done it so many times. Ooh. Yuck. This is going to be a rough start, especially since that tube or that 12 ball tied up next to the two. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try to just bust this back open and play the 12 in the side pocket. Unless I miss. So that's only a one. So nothing I can do about that if I end up with a um, bad break. Now, if y'all saw my other post, I do have uh, this Delta 13 rack outlined on my pool table. So now I can easily see what balls are in the rack and what balls are outside of the rack. That way I don't have to bother measuring um, with the rack to know, you know what ball I can use or what ball I can't use. Probably, it's probably hard to tell uh, on the camera, but it is there. Uh, I had a photo of it on my uh, community wall. That's a little bit of a break. So like now, you know, when, when I look at the outline, I can instantly see that this 13 ball can be a break ball, right? And then I might be able to turn these into break balls as I, as I maneuver around, but then now I'm going to try to go ahead and rinse and repeat the, uh, the process of, you know, picking off the table, identifying my trouble balls, identifying my break ball, identify po uh, potential key balls, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Because the more you practice this, the, the easier it starts to get to identify this stuff. And you, you basically identify them quicker and quicker, is what I meant to say. That was pretty risky. I could have moved, I could have accidentally moved my 13, which I would not want to do. And I can't tell if I can make that 11 ball. So I'm going to come down here for this 8. Again, similar thing where I don't have to worry about the bottom half of the table anymore. And you can see with the AirPods, normally my Bluetooth transmitter is right here, so leaning up against the table is a little rough because I'd end up hitting the transmitter. Now I don't have to worry about that no more. But that can I'm trading audio quality for that convenience. You know, is, is it going to be worth it in the long run? I don't know. I haven't quite figured that part out yet. 
but we'll see. That might not have, have been a good thing. <clears throat> oh, and I was trying to bump into those two. And see, the way this is looking, I might have to shoot my 13 just to break these open the way this is looking right now. I play the 6 and try to get position on the 13 to do that, so that way I can keep my run going. So, because keeping the run alive is more important than <laughs> maintaining the break ball. I'll just have to try to make another break ball if I can. So, like, I, I turned the 14 into a break ball. Oh, wow. Okay. Warm up racks. As our as our <laughs> as our score gets progressively better. That's five on the table, so that's a ten. Uh what am I missing here? I did a five on the first attempt, did I not? I think I did. So oh, it looks like there's already a bug in my program. I can't, I can't delete scores anymore. So let me put the 5 in there. Um, and then let me put the 10 that I just scored. All right, so the, 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 the 1, which was my second attempt, is now logged as my first attempt. And I already see a bug because I, I can no longer um, delete scores. So I'm going to have to fix that. So that's the joys of programming, finding bugs and fixing them. So now I've got to be real careful about entering scores since I know I can't fix them. It's a, a decent break. No balls are down there. Obviously, a little bit of an issue that I got to clean up here, and a little bit of an issue that I have to clean up here. Let's see if we can get to that nine ball right away. Well, not like that, that's for sure. I could still shoot it, it's just a more difficult shot. So we're going to change plans. The one thing you got to be careful about when you're changing plans, though, is shooting off too many soldiers. If I pick off too many of these balls without uh, solving any of my trouble spots, then it makes keeping uh, this rack going or this run going a little difficult. Eleven ball combination. Oh, I'm gonna get hooked. I was trying to get position on the nine ball. I guess I should have went ahead and broke them apart. 
Yeah, I am I am fully hooked. Frozen on the 12. I'm frozen on the 12, so maybe maybe I can try to do a cut and do throw shot to the corner pocket. This is a legal shot since I'm frozen to it. I can literally push right through it. I'm going to put a boatload of right spin on the ball. But that didn't work. So poor positional play on my part. So four, seven, eight, and that's only a seven. <clears throat> All right, so now as we go further and further into the attempts, I start to talk less and less and try to focus more and more. And then usually, usually, the performance does go up. Ah. I've been getting that type of result on the break more and more often now uh, ever, ever since I uh, created the, um, the rack outline. I don't understand what the relation is as to why that actually happens, though. Ooh. Yuck. Another one. But that's usually, when I see the rack break open like that, that's what makes me want to uh, more and more start using a, um, a template rack. You know, because I'm obviously trying to give myself a good rack here, but if there, if there, if there are accidental gaps in there, especially since the, the rack is outlined, then I would hope that the, um, the rack would just break open. Kind of like that. I don't care about that little cluster there in the middle because you know I can I can try to work around that. But that that last one where it just like like two balls, two or three balls came out, like that was ridiculous. I wasn't expecting that. <clears throat> so, uh, that's a three.
it and get it. I was trying to get position on the 11. It didn't come out far enough. That was not my ideal shape. Oh, gosh. I don't know how I did that. It must have taken my eye off the ball. And it's mistakes like these that get, that get on my nerves because these, these are the types of mistakes that I should not be making that, that end my run. Or like I had, I had an open table. All I have to do is just really just make balls. And even if I get even if I get to the second rack and I don't have a decent break ball or I don't have a um, decent um, shot at the break ball, I at least got to the second rack. Not because I just missed some shot that I'm normally going to make like 90 times out of 100. Well, <clears throat> another not so terrible, or another terrible break. Try the seven ball. <laughs> and of course, I love the fact that my streams always seem to, well, I think there's only been a few occasions where I start off really good, then kind of get mediocre towards the middle, and then every now and again I start having spurts where I'll, I'll do like a really good, you know, like getting into the second rack multiple times or whatever. And then the majority of my streams always seem to start with me doing very poorly at the beginning, and I, it takes me almost the entire stream to finally to finally put up a decent number.
pool is all ball foul, so I have to be very careful not to not to touch anything. too hard. Let's see, I don't have a choice here. I've been trying to save this one ball, but I need to open these three up. <laughs> I opened them up and then basically shut, shut the run down with what I just did. Try to play the four in the corner. Oh, two ball got in the way. All right, so now we're at least up to an 11. Sometimes this is what's going to make the game fun, though. If I can solve my way through this mess. This is just horrible. Oh, ow. <laughs> Lots of clusters.
Hmm. That didn't go quite according to plan. Neither did that. I was hoping to run into something over there. So let's try to cut seven in the corner. Overcut, way overcut. <clears throat> A nine that makes this a six. So there's a better break, but then look where my cue ball ends up. Like, ah. Oh. Man, let's see if I can cut this 11 ball. Sheesh. What a way to. What a way to start this rack. That was risky. I think I hit that hard enough. I've now made this a lot harder than it needs to be.
Ooh, actually not hard enough. All right. All right, well, we finally made it to the second rack. And here's where I'm notorious for not making the break ball. And this is where, like, this is the condition where I'm, I'm more satisfied that my run would end with this. I don't want it to end, obviously. But if I can, if I can get here and my run ends here, okay, fine. You know, because then I got to, my, my ending pattern was not the greatest. My uh, transitions weren't the greatest, and so those are the things I have to improve for next time. I <laughs> that I bobbled the pocket. That didn't look like an overcut or an undercut. I just bobbled. It looked, it, to me, it looked like it bobbled the pocket. The replay will obviously know better than that. But hey, at least we finally made it to the second rack. So that starts to look more on the up and up. One thing to get a zero because I missed the because I missed the break ball, the o the opening break ball, which I have done from time to time. But it's another thing to just get a zero because I make the shot and then scratch on top of that. All right, so let's go ahead and try a different break. Let's see what we can do with this. See what kind of patterns we get, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> like that. If I don't make if I don't make the opening break ball, and that was I didn't cut I didn't cut it enough. Normally normally I overcut that. Oh, this is going to be another one of those rough nights. All right. That one there, I made sure to just focus on the shot and not so much focus on breaking the breaking the stack open, which I think is what my biggest problem is usually with the uh, the break shot. Boy. I to make this hard on myself, that's for sure.
That one a tad bit too hard. Or did I did I say too hard? I meant not hard not hard enough is what I meant. be a hard one to control, that's for sure. Oh, come on, where's the cue ball going to end up? Perfect, right where I want it to be. I just missed. <clears throat> All right. We'll try that break shot again. Just focus on making the ball, not really focus on the power being put into it seem to give me a better result. Yeah, kind of like that. Boy, just shooting one hard shot after another.
And when you do that, you're you're bound to miss. <clears throat> All right, but uh, some of those shots are starting to starting to build some confidence up there. That's an eight. Oh, come on, Chris. I didn't even try to hit that one hard. There we go. <laughs> not, not much of an opener there, but we're gonna we're gonna make do with it. That's for sure. Oh, gee whiz, I am off tonight. And I certainly can't explain it. But last time I did this, all I did was just keep on going until I finally pushed through it. Something's got to click eventually. bumping in the ball, that's for sure.
All right. That was not the ending pattern I had in mind, but it worked. Because the second to last ball was supposed to be the key ball. So, and that, that's kind of an, that's, that's a, what I did was a very poor example, but it is an example nonetheless of how a, a ball that's past the side pocket um, can actually serve a good purpose. So the idea was that I actually um, wanted to be able to get straight on that ball, that, that last ball that I shot, so that way I can get fairly straight on the, my key ball, so that way I can have this shot here, because it would just be like just stop shots, really. Pocket speed at least? No, not quite. Ah, all right. So that puts us into the second rack again. I said as the as the rhythm starts to starts to build itself up. I wonder if that's my problem with the um, original break shot. Is that I'm putting force into the brake shot. Let me try with finesse just to see what it does. Is that what my problem was? I need to, I need to do it with finesse? Okay. Or at least I hope that's what my problem was. It's a one one sample size is, is not enough data to, to prove uh that to be true. But so far it's at least a good sample size. Opened up one mess to create another mess.
Oh, come on. I didn't deserve that. Look at that. That's a good break. That's a good break ball. And a good break ball angle. Oops, not three. Thirteen. Oh, I didn't deserve that. All right, let's let's see now if the, if the, the finesse answer is true. Right, starting to starting to get a little looser now. No matter, no matter how many times I do this, though, it's still pressuring to perform in front of a camera, especially if my performance starts off a little on the bad side. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't care where my cue ball ended up. I can try to tighten that up, but at least the rack opens up. All right, so break with finesse, not with power. That is not a ball that I wanted to move. That, that really was not a ball I wanted to move at all. You. Oh, come on. That's always a heartbreaker to watch the ball bobble from side to side like that. Yeah, okay. Well, at least we identified the problem in a, in a potential resolution. So let's try to make good use of it.
that didn't quite work out the way I wanted it. So this should hopefully give you a, an idea of what I was talking about, how like you don't necessarily have to break the balls apart, you just have to get them out of the way of each other. Ah, hit that way too soft. Now I've got a terrible leave on the eight. Settle for this long shot. Right now. That's starting that's starting to feel much better. You know, sometimes you think I'd be grateful of making three balls on the break, but I wish that last one would have stayed up. <laughs> I missed the entire stack. All right. <clears throat> We're going to try the one ball. Ah, oh, look at that. I got my shape on the 10, though. All right, like I said, the numbers are climbing. That's what we want to see. I had a hard time trying to figure out what to do with that uh, 6 and 3. So that's plus 8. Now we're, in the, now we're in the 20s.
Stop, 13, stop! Ah. Looks like the combo's dead. Shot that one first so that way I can get my cue ball off the rail. This is why uh, balls that are on the rail are troubled balls, and you do want to try to deal with them as soon as you can. Oh, man. <clears throat> That's a 10. almost doesn't seem worth it. one of them uh, I 
feel like I have to shoot this. I don't want to. I feel like I do. Hopefully everybody understands why I didn't really want to shoot that eight. I mean, it was a difficult shot, but looks like I at least managed it okay. Don't give me a back cut angle. That's not what I want. Man, thought I hit you hard enough. Ah, see, that's what I get for trying to hold the cue ball. I could have made that ball, but then I just wouldn't have. I would have been flat. On my on my break ball, and that's from me playing poor position uh, from the one ball. Oh, I should have just made it anyway. At least this break is behaving now. Oh. Just keep on going. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> you look at this and go, how is that much better? It is. Ooh, all right, I rushed, I rushed that one. That's my fault.
All right, that didn't really break up anything that I wanted. Oh, come on. Eight ball was my eight ball was my break ball. That was the only reason why I chose to shoot the two now. Get that get that spot out of the way. Seven eight. Uh, how many attempts am I up to? Alright, let's do four more. I got through thirty attempts with all Oh man, the the stats for tonight are horrible. I'll do four more and then uh, take a break. a rack like that. This is why this is why I was actually kind of power breaking. I don't have a shot. Try the one ball. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have a shot, I, or I didn't. I didn't have a clear shot at anything. And then, if my tangent line uh, that I'm setting up is is that straight to where I'm literally running into both the head balls and just sticking to the rack like that, because I really. I really kind of just want to run into one of them and, and not two of and not both of them. <laughs> Go all the way around this ball. <laughs> Oh, Lordy.
that not give me anything? It didn't. Oh, come on. Even when I think I'm playing a good pattern, I don't get anything. So let's try to let's try to cross bank the seven. And then in, in the words of Grady Seasons, it's like a nightmare. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Try the four ball. Oh, that was a ridiculous rack to survive. Like, man. I hope I can get a, give me a thumbs up on, on, a, on that rack. Like the stream. Gosh. That was ridiculous. Oh. Back up there. Something. to get straight on that five. I don't want to shoot the five now because my cue ball runs into the eight. So the question becomes, do I shoot this 12 or do I shoot this 13? Nope, undercut. All right. Whew. Undercut the ball. 17. What are we at? All right, two more attempts, and then we'll take a break. And then probably uh, switch microphones after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going we're, we're gonna to blame the performance on the AirPods. I'm now, the, my aerodynamics of how I maneuver around the table are significantly altered since I'm not wearing a, a heavier, a, a slightly heavier microphone, or now that I've got less gear on my body. That's, 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 that's what we'll blame it on. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see here.
Oh, wow, are you kidding me? Six, seven. I think this is my yeah last attempt and then we're going to take a break Yuck! That is disgusting. Especially after I do that and I still don't have a shot! I'm going to try to nudge this six over a little bit and turn it into a break ball after I make this 13. Okay. Straight in. Oh, gosh, not enough spin on that one. Ugh. I also have to spin quickly over to the to the side rail, so I'm not so I'm not left with this. Wow. Okay. Hey, it's still cast. 
doesn't matter how it gets there, as long as it gets there, kind of like BCA. Whew, okay. Oh, the agony. <laughs> oh, man, the agony of that shot. Okay, let's take a break. Let's give my brain a chance to reset. Man, that was such a poor start. That's a 17. Okay, so the idea is going to be... Give you all a chance to see this now. You can see this is this is a horrible start, and then now I'm going to go ahead and set up um, for my other microphone. And like I said, you should be able to hear a drastic difference <clears throat> when I set up this microphone. Whew. I guess, like I said, I guess that's it. I guess it's a big difference between um, actually. Because, I mean, this is Bluetooth also, but I guess the, the difference is is that the, the Bluetooth feed is going right into the auxiliary port, which I guess is a little different than if, the, um, if this were, if I were to somehow Bluetooth this microphone set to, um, to the computer. Like, that, that would be different. So, um, now what I can do is I'm going to turn off the filter that I have because this microphone uh, works so much better and when I switch to it which should be now you should hear a much clearer audio than before So that's that's at least the significant difference. And so, like, if I were to actually get an actual microphone to suspend above the table, that's going to be my oh, ow, that hurt. That's going to be the thing that I worry about the most is um, is what the audio uh, sounds like. Now you're saying it's quieter. Let me check the actual computer settings. Uh, yep. And let's bump it up to here. So that should help that. And then let's bump this up to, oh, I don't know. Let's let's say about right about here. So that that should, like I said, there should be a there should be a drastic difference between using this microphone versus using the um the AirPods. <clears throat> I think it's and it, and it's a, it's a huge difference. So <clears throat> that's what I that's what I have to worry about. Especially when, but the only difference is that when I get a real microphone um, and suspend it um, above the table, at least that microphone is going to have a wire that's going to plug into the computer. So maybe, mm, maybe, maybe it'll be, um, maybe, maybe it'll be just as good. I just have to eventually just go ahead and just make the investment, buy the equipment, set it up, and and just uh, and just see uh, what happens um, after that. <clears throat> Let's see, Ray Volt, you're asking if I ever hit 100 off camera. I mean, I almost don't want to answer that, right? It's like, because I can, I can literally, I, I'd rather would just use what you see on camera um, to, uh, as, as just proof, right? Because it, you know, you can expect me to be honest. The answer is no, I haven't. Um, but, you know, besides that, I can virtually make up any number that I want. You know, I could have said, well, I got into the 80s or I got into the 70s. And I, 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 I just don't want to do that. If, if it wasn't done on camera, then that, that's, you know, just it, it, it hasn't happened yet. Everything that you've seen on camera is that uh, two years ago when I did Dr. Dave's Run Your Age Straight Pull Challenge, I did manage to get a 50 when I only needed to do 40. 
But that 50 doesn't count here. What counts here is what you see on the screen, which is a 48. And I did that um, with the help of a uh, shortstop on pool, Mr. Bob, when he, uh, when he and I did a um, when he and I did a collab, and um, he was actually guiding me through what balls to shoot, how to shoot them, set up the break balls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now, if we look at the stats, um, we can see here. Like I said, I have made. Oh, uh, I gotta do a reset. There we go. I have made. Um, 30 attempts, 25 times I could not get out of the first rack, and that is just terrible. And so what we can see here is I can uh, expand this. Uh, I should be able to expand this. And you can see all these different numbers. Why don't I have the scroll bars? Where is my scroll bar? Uh, let's, let's move this over so it's a little bit more in the middle. So there's another bug. I'm, I'm I'm supposed to have a scroll bar here so I can scroll over. So you can see all the different numbers. Like so, this was this was a feature that was actually requested, which is to be able to make the window bigger, make the window smaller. So there's actually a minimum and maximum size. So really, I can uh, you know stretch it all the way out to here to where now you can't even see it anymore, um, or I can make it um, as as small as this. So there there there's now a minimum and maximum size, but you can see like there's there's only so much that'll actually fit um, on the window. Boss man, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Tell shortstop what you're using. He's having a, a tough time getting his live feed up. I'm already talking uh, to shortstop uh, in the background. I'm helping him uh, in any way that I possibly can. His big issue is that the table that he has at his house, um, he only has access to like two sides of it uh, because it's literally stuck in a corner next next to a staircase. So um, if you know, uh, if you've watched any of his videos, you'll see that his videos are shot at an actual pool hall. So the biggest problem about that is it's very difficult to live stream at a pool hall because of music that could be in the background. Um, and anytime there's music in the background, then your video can be flagged with a copyright claim for, for music. So that's one of the biggest problems that he's that he's uh, having trying to trying to set up um, uh, his his stuff for live stream because he pretty much wants to do the same thing that that I'm doing and I'm waiting for it like I I want to I want to watch that kind of stuff so I'm trying to help him uh, the be, uh, the best way that I can to to figure to figure all that out on on how that stuff's going to work so yeah we're already talking. <clears throat> No, we're 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 already uh, in discussions on on how to get that, uh, uh, hopefully on how to, how to get that going. Okay, so I'll be using. I can see, yeah, it turns out he was live an hour ago, uh, testing out his his new wireless microphone uh, that he got. So <clears throat> I'll probably check on him uh, probably tomorrow um, or later tonight if it's not too late after after my live stream's over. So we will do the remainder of the live stream using this microphone here. I already know for a fact that the audio is just so much better. Because I thought about even that I would even use the um, the AirPods like if I were to join somebody else's stream, um, whether they're using StreamYard or Restream or or whatever, um, because that would just probably be easier on me. Uh, just to have just the AirPods in and and be able to and be able to play through that. I've also used this on other people's live streams, and I would just have earbuds in so that way I can hear them. But I would still use this as a microphone. So I think the lesson learned really is just that Bluetooth is only as good as it can get versus this this Bluetooth here. Since there is a transmitter going to a receiver that's plugged into the auxiliary port. I, I probably should use that evidence as high hopes that um, when I actually get a real microphone um, in, in here to hopefully record audio and stuff, and that way I don't have to wear anything. I can just come in here and shoot, um, that the audio will still be just as good. So we'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> we will see. All right. Let's see. What the heck has everybody been talking about? I'm going to scroll up a bit and look around. Let's see here. You're surprised Q listings is not here tonight, Eves. It's what? It's like three o'clock in the morning over there. I'm surprised every time he is here. OK, 
Okay, looks like everybody's just enjoying themselves. Just talking amongst each other. As long as everybody's being nice, that's all I care about. Okay, cool. I don't really see any questions, though, so nothing for me to answer there. No problemo. <clears throat> Let's shrink this back. So somehow I lost the scroll bar uh, that used to be there, so I got to fix that. And then somehow I lost the ability to delete scores, so I got to fix that. One of the changes that I made here is um, is this grid that I have over here. This used to not be a grid. It used to just be a list. I changed it to a grid, and I guess somehow that that caused um, a lot of other things to to change. And I guess when I started, uh, when I when I made the the window resizable, that somehow <laughs> that somehow ca um, caused the um, the scroll bar to to disappear. Because usually when I expand the scores, I should be able to just scroll over, uh, so that way I can show you what the uh, the rest of the uh, rest of the scores are instead of having to expand the window. So that's that's the joys of programming. So there'll be a there's already two versions out. The, the first version was the initial release. The second one is is this one here <laughs> that that has a couple of bugs in it. Um, so the third one is I'm gonna I'm gonna fix the bugs and then I'll probably um, start allowing you to enter scores here and here. So that way if I if I accidentally put in a number that I'm not supposed to, like I I, I if I'm supposed to put 24 and I accidentally put 25, that's gonna put a 25 here. And uh, I don't. There's not a way for you to fix uh, this number using the program. You have to. You actually have to go to the file uh, that um, has the number in there and fix it there. So things you learn. Things you learn. <clears throat> uh, the title bar is there, um, Eves. I think the issue is because it's a window capture, let me let me verify this. Because it's a window capture, you just can't see the title bar. Yeah, because it's a because it's a window capture. It's not showing you the title bar. There is, there is a title bar um you, uh, where I have the, you know, the x to close it, the the window icon um because in OBS since I'm doing a window capture, it just doesn't show you the title bar. But it it is there. I'd actually have to. I would actually have to do a display capture and then just shrink um, or just crop down to the actual window, and then you, then you'd be able to see the title bar. Actually, I wonder if I can. Uh, there's the capture cursor. That's the capture method. Yeah, I don't. I don't see an option where I can where I can show the title bar at least uh, within the OBS software. All right. That's my break. Let's go put up some good scores. Goodness gracious, those first few attempts really were really, really bad. Now that I'm aerodynamically uh, set to, to play now, now that I'm wearing <laughs> uh, this, this other microphone, I said we're going we're gonna to blame the poor performance on the, uh, on the AirPods.
the heck was that all about? Fifteen ball. Oh, come on. I tell you one thing that's also different um, is being able to hear myself. Because with those AirPods in, it does actually slightly cancel out all the noise, all the noise that's around me. So when I'm sitting there talking to y'all, even I myself sound muffled with the um, with the air uh, with the AirPods in my ear. So now that my ears are open, I can actually hear everything just fine. Interesting. Hmm. Looks good on paper, but it just don't really have a decent shot. Too busy watching the current shot, didn't even realize the, the mess I just made there. Wow, that was really interesting. Serious man, (sighs) 
Ah, I was already, ah, I was already frustrated the fact that I tied up those those two balls like I did. Nice. Man, that's kind of tough. Let's see here. Slow down, slow down. Oh, and you still moved to the four ball. All right, but at least the two ball replaced it. That's what I was really worried about was moving that four. Yeah, but I still didn't leave myself a decent shot. Oh, come on. Oops. What are we dealing with? A seven, that's an eight, that's a seven. Well, sooner or later, hopefully, I'm going to have that, that one good run that just sets the stream apart. Because besides that, tonight is just a struggle.
Oh, what the heck was that, Chris? That was the wrong spin. That's what that was. Ah. Wrong spin. I'm actually glad to see that the um spin took effect, though. Tell you what I used to do though. I used to break like this. Where my my cut shot was really thin. Might go back to doing that. Because basically, the the thinner your cut shot is, the less effort you have to put into your shot, um, and you'll get and the cue ball just goes right into the rack. Hopefully everybody should know I'm going to try to preserve the one ball. Got a couple of issues that I have to fix, so that's what I'm working on. Awkward.
Ah, man. And I didn't run into the 11 ball. And actually, when I cut that 7 ball in, I was supposed to run into the 8. But that didn't work. So let's try the... Let's try the thin cut shot again. That seemed to that seemed to work for me. That's actually what I used to do <clears throat> the very beginning of the series. I'd set this shot up, put my cue ball like right here, and just do a really thin cut shot. Kind of like that. the heck? <clears throat> Talk about bad luck. I'm just not catching a break here. Because I don't want to shoot that. I mean, I could, obviously. Then I have to try to develop this guy. Well, maybe I should. Because I can also use this as a break ball. So let's, let's keep the rack alive. Or try to keep the rack alive. I might even miss the six ball. <laughs> and I thread the needle. Never mind that. And I can also use this ball um, as a break ball. So I've, I've got plenty of options. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That's a seven. Thank you. 
Wow. Oh, come on. Ah. This is torture. Bank the two. Ah, oh, and I almost got the cue ball in, in position. Gosh, every time I start feeling that rhythm come into play, one little mistake changes everything. Okay, we're fine. I can leave that. I can leave that one ball alone.
Yuck. Well, that stinks. All right, kind of, sort of. <clears throat> oh, I hope I'm, I hope I'm starting to wake up now. All right, focus on the ball. Do not focus on the rack. Let's just decide what we're going to do and just focus on that and leave it at that. Nothing else matters. <laughs> I still missed it. I still overcut it too. Ended up overcutting it. I thought I made an adjustment to, to where I shouldn't have been overcutting it. Miscalculation. Yikes! Whoa, what are you doing? Wow. No, don't do that. That's not smart. Nine ball. <clears throat> oh, what? You've got to be kidding me.
There is no reason now I should not be getting out of these racks. I'm actually starting to feel really good. But, ah, oh, just falling short a little bit. And it makes me really wonder if... It makes me really wonder if, if just hearing clearer is making a, a little bit of a difference. Without the uh, AirPods in my ear. I am really starting to wonder about that. <clears throat> Of course, if it's true, that just means it's just another condition that I have to practice under, so that way I can get better at it. And it actually makes me wonder, how do people play with, with earbuds in their ears and listening to music? The more I think about it, This is not the angle I wanted on the eight ball. I wanted it to be like this. That way my cue ball can gently push these away and turn them into, into break balls. But now I got position, so I gotta play. Ah, oh, too much inside spin. Wow. Ah, I was saving this three ball as an insurance ball as I, as I tried to separate those. I would, I would almost think, okay, but. Ah. <laughs> like, why did the cue ball have to stick to the rack? Of, of all the things that cue ball could have done uh, breaking like that, because it hasn't done it the entire time. And then and now finally one time it just sticks to the rack. But I should have taken more time. You know, Bridged over a ball, so I can't, I'm not really um, aiming as accurately as I, sh as I should as if I'm down on a ball. So I should spend more time uh, shooting the ball. 
give it my full attention. Oh, don't scratch. That's a decent break. Do I have a shot? You've got to be kidding me. Really? I mean, I guess the one ball. Difficult thin shot on the 13 ball and a difficult shot on the six ball. Yeah, there's like no decent, there's no decent shot. The four ball kind of block, like if I shoot the 10, like the 10 going to hit right here. And y'all know my pockets. I don't, I don't trust my pocket to, to take it. Let's try the one ball. All right, so at least we're in the rack now. Whoa, what are you doing, cue ball? Slow down. I thought I missed that ball. <laughs> you ever do that before? Like the moment you hit a shot, you feel like you missed it? That's what that felt like. Oops. Oh. <laughs> oh, now I'm getting frustrated. I got these beautiful open racks now and I can't even finish them. <clears throat> Settle down. Settle down. You're witnessing the snowball effect again. If anybody uh, was part of my live stream where I reviewed three of my uh, last APA matches and I talked about the snowball effect, and it's really hard to recover from it, but I'm trying. Oh, gee whiz. <clears throat> and then sometimes you got to ask, like, what kind of player does this to themselves? Like, this, this, is, this is almost like, this is comparable to rage quit moment, but that's not the type of player that I am. I am a very stubborn player where I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to figure this out before the live stream gets cut. We're going to get some decent runs in here. I liked how the six ball was just ready for me and then it gets moved out of the way.
Wanted to use the six ball, really. But I'm going to have to settle for the 15. <laughs> That's all I got out of that? Ah, well, I can do it again. <laughs> That's all I get out of that one. <laughs> ah. I gotta turn, I'm trying to turn one of them into a break ball. <laughs> oh, man. This is torture. Especially, especially with where I left myself. Let's try the one on the side. Hopefully those two balls there can help me. Or maybe not. Oh, gosh. Okay. At least we finally got back into the... Did we get back into the 20s? We did. Oh, focused on some positive stuff. Got back into the 20s again. How many attempts is that? Oh, gosh, really? All right, let's do five more, and then we'll take another break.
do 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 Ah, made it worse. Oh, gee whiz. Talk about having an off night. Oh, wow. Damn, I overcut that one. <clears throat> I see Q listings is in my live chat. Definitely got to get this figured out before our exhibition match, that's for sure. Otherwise, he's going to crush me. Okay. Man. Well, hello there. Come to grace us with your presence, or are you going to hide under the table? Maybe you'll be my good luck charm. Still, even then, every now and again, I can just get a, a bad break. Are you going to go sit in your chair? Right in my soul. That hurt. That one really hurt. <clears throat> oh gosh, that one hurt. I'm going to be having nightmares about that shot. What are you gonna give me this time? I've had just about everything. All right, let's see here. Thank you. 
Oh, really? I was trying to hit the two and the five, and I end up hitting my break ball instead? Mmm. This is killing me. Let's try the 15. Okay, well, at least I can use the five ball. Oh, that is so frustrating. Hit the ball. That's all you have to do is hit the ball. Ah, I didn't get it. I am straight in, I think. I didn't get it. But I also got poor position on the three ball. Like I just didn't, I just didn't hit that nine ball hard enough. Let's see, what are we looking at? Missed it all together. All right, so the pattern that I've been seeing here is that I can, since I don't, on a nine foot table, I can probably bank that one ball down here. But on my eight foot table, it seems to want to go two rails. So that's actually what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna call the one ball up there with a two railer. One, get out of the way balls. Oh, never mind. Where the heck was that 12 ball? I'm going to I'm gonna have to remember that. Was that the last one? Yeah, that was 50. <clears throat> Where in the world was that 12 ball? Cause I'm going to have to remember that. 
Oh my goodness, everybody. I do apologize. This is probably one of the poorest performances I've done thus far in this series. Ugh. But, oh, ow, again, my back. That's the name of the game. That is literally, that is literally the name of the game. Some nights are good and some nights are just terrible. Ah, uh, oh, I see that we have Tony, the silent assassin Robles in my live chat. How's it going, man? I am struggling tonight. This is just outright ridiculous how bad I'm struggling. All right, I'm not going to stretch the window open. There's that 20, but I mean, look at all these miserable numbers. 42 times I could not get out of the first rack. But I don't mind that. It's frustrating. It is frustrating. Uh, but that's the name of the game. That's pool. Yeah, just like A Funk says, that's pool. Like <laughs> listings, do I want motivation? <laughs> no, I do not want motivation. I am going to I'm going to do this all on my own. <laughs> but I don't know what it is like ever, ever, like literally ever since I drew the, the outline when I was doing the normal side pocket break, j just like how y'all, um, just like how y'all saw, like the, the racks just weren't spreading open. And I don't, I don't know. I, I, I cannot for the life of me, um, uh, cannot for the life of me figure out why. Um, and then of course, when I'm going to that thin cut, um, on the on the uh, opening break shot, which is something I used to do way back in the day when I first started this series, the racks would spread open. But now, as the racks uh, spread open, you can see I'm still just having a tough time getting out of the first rack. Uh, let's see. Now, now, did I see Jacob Watson, the guy I played at the Texas Open? It wasn't the Texas Open. It was the BCA, uh, Texas BCA um, Open. Um, yes, and I did see that he won the uh, U.S. Uh, Amateur Championship. I messaged him the moment that he won to congratulate him. <clears throat> that was an awesome Bo – both him and um, Ernesto Bayawa, th those are both my uh, local Texans. I, I know I know both of them, and I've, I've actually played both of them. Ernesto I played many, 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 many years ago. It was in um, – a Lone Star uh, touring tournament that used to they used to travel um, around Texas. Now they're more now they're more just based in Houston. They don't really they don't really travel um, all that much anymore. <clears throat> Q listings. I I see your motivation there, man. It, it it's it's not gonna it's not gonna move me tonight. I'm just gonna still pace myself. I got one more uh, session of attempts uh, that I'm gonna do, and I'm I'm gonna try I'm gonna try my damnedest to 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 put up some decent numbers uh, before this stream ends. <clears throat> Whew. Tony Robles, he says, I'm going to learn so much from the performance. Um, the dues will be worth it. That's, that's the idea. That's, that's the idea. I mean, it's, 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 it's the roller coaster ride of, of playing pool. Like I said, some, some nights are good and some nights are bad. And that's, that's just pool. That's just pool. But all I need is that one good run. That's all I need is one good run. I would eventually love to have runs where I don't, I'm not staring at 40 times that I, that I didn't get out of the 42 times that I didn't get out of the first rack. Oh my goodness. Kenneth Bowers. Thanks for stopping by, bud. You have yourself a good night. <clears throat> but I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Oh my goodness! What is? Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and translate that. Uh, thank you so much, Eves, for the twenty-five dollars uh, Canadian uh, super uh, super chat. Let's see what that translates to. Uh, am I doing this right? Twenty dollars. Okay, so it equates to about twenty twenty dollars twenty uh, uh, U.S. dollars. Thank you so much for that, bud. I really do appreciate it. Whew. Mm. 
<clears throat> that's the that's the power of the internet. <clears throat> you can just be able to just punch in the numbers and then uh, see what it translates to. Uh, now, now you're wanting to know: Have, have I ever played up against a professional uh, player? I have. Um, the first one that comes to mind is um, Justin Bergman. Uh, I don't remember exactly uh, when it was. It was during the, the Texas State Open when he actually traveled. Now, interestingly enough, I mean, our, our, our match is, is in the um, Fargo app, but I distinctly remember... Yeah, this was in tw it was in 2016. I played uh, Justin Bergman, and according to Fargo, I lost four to nine. But I personally seem to remember winning at least five racks on on Justin, and I was I because I knew like no, no matter no matter what the loss was, I was proud to ha to have those racks. But ac according to Fargo, it it was only four. But for some reason, I I seem to remember it being uh, five. But I think he was the only. Um, I think he was the only uh, pro that I've. Ever, I mean, I've been in the presence of pros. Pros come to the um, um, to the Texas Open all the time. Uh, but I think J Justin Bergman is the only one that I, that I've ever had to the, the the privilege of playing. I did a I did an exhibition match um, against Efren Reyes because uh, that's when I've got the uh, autographed memorabilia uh, that I've shown uh, before. Um, all I did was play one rack of ten ball. I broke. Made a ball on the break, and then I had to do a. I think I tried to do a two rail kick shot on the one ball, missed it altogether. Gave Efren, um, gave Efren ball in hand, and he ran the table. I actually have a recording of that, and I, I, I was wanting to uh, post it just to just to tell the story. Like, here's me getting my butt kicked by the the great uh, Efren Reyes in one in one rack of ten ball. This is when he actually was touring uh, through Texas. Um, and he stopped by uh, Round Rock, Texas, and I, I got the privilege of being able to to play him uh, for one rack amongst amongst a lot of other people that were there. Because um, uh, the 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 time that I got to play him, uh, he was there to uh, to do an exhibition uh, and stuff, and um, I was already playing in a tournament, and I got picked as a raffle winner to be able to play Efren Reyes where uh, me, like me and a, and a select few got to, uh, uh, got raffled to play him while others had to pay to play him in an exhibition and bang time pool. You are correct. I did play, uh, Demetrius, uh, my coach from uh, Minnesota, cause he is classified as a professional pool player as well. We did an exhibition match, um, two years ago on new year's Eve where we played uh 10 ball and he, crushed me uh in, in in 10 ball and that that's on that was on a live stream it's in my um it's on my youtube channel uh where we actually did a live stream and i and prior to that exhibition match um i did do an interview um with demetrius um when i was up there in minnesota taking his boot camp uh and stuff and his boot camp is what helped uh turn my game around um as far as knowledge of moving the cue ball around the the better use of uh, uh using inside spin on certain shots um, and then just how to deal with, uh, certain situations. So straight pool on the other hand, though, <clears throat> has become a whole different animal, uh, for me, a whole completely different animal for me. <clears throat> but, um, I can tell that the, the, the things that I'm learning in straight pool is bleeding into my rotational games. <clears throat> Um, which has been for the the benefit and and of course my uh, my eight ball games now of course I'm not really really showing it all that well uh, tonight but hopefully during this uh, last attempt of uh, or last session of attempts will make a difference so let's do it now fortunately because I started with my AirPods I can actually go longer than 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 four and a half hours but I don't think I will. <laughs> You know, because this microphone can last four and a half hours, but I started the stream with my with my AirPods. Yeesh. Okay.
Got to be kidding me. Just missing shots like that oh, just makes my snowball go completely out of control. And that was a shot that I played for. Like, I'm, I'm playing for that position so that way I can break the, the cluster up. But then I, I missed the shot. Like, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh, look at that cue ball spin. Where are you going, cue ball? Besides not giving me a shot. Because I had a shot until you spun there. Let's try the four ball. <laughs> oh it hurts oh it hurts <laughs> the agony <laughs> that's at least I'm gonna I'm gonna have a shot right okay sheesh and this time the rack doesn't open up Really trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do for a break ball. Thank you. 
even when I do these little bumps and nudges and stuff, I'm just left with very difficult stuff. Oh. Oh, I thought I made that one. <clears throat> That's a 10. All right, you know what? Let's go back to, let's go back to breaking from the side. This is just like when you're playing regular pool and you, you, your brakes uh, for so long one way, like on one side of the table, and then all of a sudden it's just not working anymore, and then you switch to another side. That's pretty much what I need to do here as far as I'm concerned. So remember, don't worry about the rack. Just focus on the ball. I didn't want to bump my ball there, but okay. I specifically chose this route to get to this 12 ball, so that way hopefully I can open this up, and then hopefully the rack is solved. And I just got to not miss. Easier said than done, especially when I'm left like this. Maybe I should have used topspin. Ah, oh, that is so frustrating. You know what? I can have a horrible stream for the for the for the remainder. But to finally get an ending pattern, I don't even care if I miss the nine ball, but to finally get an ending pattern like this. 
to finally get an ending pattern like that where I can just roll my cue ball around and it's going to go exactly where I need it to go. That just made my night. Because those are the types of ending patterns you really want to look for. What are you doing? Are you leaving? Mm -hmm. All right, again, focus on the shot. Oh, let me put my 14 in. Focus on the shot, not the rack. Just let the rack do what it's supposed to do. And then we'll figure out the rest. Oh, I got my work cut out for me, that's for sure. <clears throat> Ew, the heck was that all about? Well, I kind of wanted to leave that seven alone, but it's my best shot. And that didn't exactly spin where I wanted it to. That's what I was afraid of, just to be able to draw back here. Okay, well, that's okay. Hey, that's another 20. But I was trying to get on that one ball because the four ball was a break ball. And I needed to get that one ball out of the way. So let's try this again, because this, this at least appears to be working. Are you kidding me? Come on. And the cue ball stuck to the rack. go. All right.
uh, of all things, like seriously, of all things, I hate this game. Oh. oh, look at that. And I way overcut that three ball. That should give you an idea of how thin I can cut a ball. Oop, don't count that one. Come here. Eight, nine, that's a six. Oh. That time you stuck to the rack. All right. Okay, everybody should see the eight ball is probably going to be my break ball. Even the nine ball can be a break ball now. That's kind of good. Let's play the six. Nine ball's a little high, though. The eight ball's a better ball. Really, Chris? I mean, it's it's still a good ball, but sheesh. Why do you have to bump into it? Okay. That was an intentional bump. I meant to do that one. And now, actually... I don't know. I guess I guess the eight ball is still a better one. Yeah, I think so. Uh, 
Oh, talk about bad positioning. And now I have to try to bank this. Well, this allows me to move the cue ball in the kitchen. So this was actually to my benefit. <clears throat> I was trying to stun forward just so I can have the, the position I think I was going to need to be able to make the eight ball. But since the cue ball lands in the rack, I get ball in hand in the kitchen. So that kind of works. And that's a strategy that even Tony Robles uh, mentions uh, quite often. Um, and I, I don't even think, I don't even think about it. Like I just end up, you know, just trying to, trying to play position. Like that's, that's always on my mind is play position, play position, play position. I don't even think about like, you know, put the cue ball on the rack so that way you can get ball in hand. Like it just, it just doesn't cross my mind. Now the question is, what kind of a shot do I have to take on this? Like, really? I, I guess here? Or here? Oh, jeez. I missed that so horribly. But... <clears throat> I said strategies like that don't even don't even cross my mind. You know what? You know my my problem was on that again as I was I was thinking about the rack. I got to remember don't think about the rack. Just make the ball. And then just watch what the rack does. That's all I should be doing. Shouldn't really try to worry about anything else. Just make the ball and then figure the rest out. That's all that matters. <clears throat> All right, so let's play the 11. I wish that six ball would have rolled just a little bit farther. I mean, it still works. It's completely outside of the rack. But just a little bit farther. I wasn't expecting that. Way overstroke that one.
And as far as I know, when the when the break ball is this close to the rack, this is one where I almost want to be pretty flat on the ball. I mean, I, I still want a back cut, but it's going to be a small one. <clears throat> that way I can kind of draw into the rack. Yeah, so you'll notice you'll notice how I'm on this side of the ball rather than being on this side of the ball. As far as I know, when when the when the break ball is this close to the rack, you want to be on that that side. You, you want to be on the the closer side of the of the rack. When it's further away, that's when you want to be on the that's when you want to be on the opposite side. And I, I, oh, I, I seriously hate doing all that work just to miss the break ball. I do that a lot. That is so frustrating. And <laughs> here's a here's a fun fact for you. I was originally going to title this stream because y'all notice how like at the end of every road to 100, I put like some sort of goofy title like uh, tonight says, you know, trying out the uh, the AirPod Pros. I was actually going to put a case of the Mondays. That's literally what I was going to title this until until I decided to change it to um, trying out the AirPod Pros. Because this definitely feels like a case of the Mondays. especially when I'm missing break balls and I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even trying to, I'm not even trying to break the rack open. I'm just letting the cue ball break the rack open. So that turned out pretty good. I developed the 13 ball. Now if I can just keep it. That's going to be the trick.
Give me just a second. I heard something crash. What are you doing? Ugh. If y'all could still hear me, I just caught the, the cat on my kitchen counter. So, sorry about that. Why did I have to get straight in on this ball? Like, seriously. Oh. All right, whatever. Oh, oh, that burns. All because I got straight in on that ball. So I would have to draw back perfectly to where I can follow uh, the ball on that last shot that I did rather than doing rather than doing what I did. So now I ha I have to hit this one. This is usually something I don't like to do. And I just heard something crash again. Sorry. What are you doing? Goodness gracious, cat. Boy, he's being he's being wild today. All right. So this kind of worked out. All right, so I've got the position on the five that I wanted because I'm going to go right into the stack. Oh, or not. All right, let me check on the cat's food dish. Ugh, I cannot believe I missed that five ball. That was that was perfect position too. Like that was that was literally perfect position. Seventeen. Oh.
oh, this hurts. Like this just hurts. Nope, I can't bank that. That ball's in the way. Like this is just, this is, this is to the point to where it's painful. 13 ball. I am just getting like absolute bad luck on my breaks here. Let's go back to this one. All right. Like I said that's that's another feel good pattern there. Had it had it made it some slight adjust some small adjustments there um, as I was going, but it was still the the general route. All right. Don't miss this ball.
Now, is it too much to ask for a shot after that? Was, ugh, like, why does my cue ball have to come all the way down here? Ah, <sighs> all right. Plus one. Oh, I fell below the double digits on my average tonight. And I don't I don't even I don't even think like one good run. I mean one good run's gonna make the stream, but the one one good run's not gonna offset the um the average, that's for sure. Where the heck was that all night? Like seriously, where was that all night? I didn't like having to bridge over the one. That's why I changed my mind. What, are you, are you done causing a ruckus in there? Is that why you want to come back and join us? Soft. This is going to hurt. <laughs> I 
got that as much off of the rail as I could, considering the angle uh, that I had. Holy cow, can I cut this? Like, ooh, I don't know. How <laughs> an undercut. That one was difficult. That one was difficult. You know, I'm starting to think, I wonder what would, how much of a difference it would be if I go ahead and clean these after the stream is over. Ah, oh, and I scratched on top of that. So scratches are not minus one. That's only a five. But if I make a ball or if I make a ball or balls and scratch, then I just don't get those points. You know what? Just for just for argument's sake. I'll clean these um afterwards. This is my Cyclops Zeus set. And I recently got a new measle ball to go with it. So that way you're still going to be able to see the spins. I'll clean, clean these afterwards. <clears throat> these should be clean. So the only thing that you're really going to notice that's different is the... Um, the 7 and the 15 being a um, cyanish looking color. But I have to rule out that variable now. So the only difference is that the, this, uh, this measle ball is red, or it has red on it, versus the uh, Predator Arcos one it has um, black.
Well, it doesn't change that I don't have a shot after the break, except for this guy. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's it. One sample size is, is not enough, not enough data to come to that conclusion yet. But maybe it's time that the the Arcos 2 set needs to be cleaned. Because I've been doing a lot of straight pull using that set. A lot. Let's find out though. Still currently don't know. Just not sure yet. That was dumb to try to play for that window. It was a very, very, very small window I was trying to play for. 
And that was not the smartest thing in the world to do. And just like that wasn't the smartest thing in the world to do, which is to go for that breakout. But I don't know, like that, that felt better. That, that felt better. So let's see how this break goes. And actually, just out of curiosity, let's go back to the normal break instead of that really thin cut break. Now, now we're now we're experimenting. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Evidence is looking. The evidence is looking pretty good. What do y'all think? I think the evidence is looking pretty good. The Arcos 2 need a bath. <laughs> Ah, no big deal. No big deal. And actually, I guess I can... I don't know. Would y'all be interested in seeing a, a, a video of the, the, the diamond ball cleaner? Like, is, is that something that... Uh, is that something that's uh, interested or interesting? I mean, because you're, you're literally just going to be watching a video of balls spinning around in a in a ball cleaner for X amount of time. I mean, I can try to come up with other types of content because all I have is just the um, Aramith ball cleaner um, polish or the, the, the yeah, the Aramith ball, uh, ball cleaner uh, solution or whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, and then plus my um, diamond ball washer that I have. Well, obviously, it won't be a very long video, but... I mean, look at that. Like, even for the cue ball to do that, that is still a million times better uh, than than what the rack was doing. So, I I think my sample size is is large enough now to say that. Yep, the Predator Arcos balls need to be cleaned. So, for those that have tables at home that sometimes wonder about this stuff. And, you, and you're wondering, like, what kind of funk you could possibly be in? This is another thing that I talk about um, on my channel, too, is, is really digging deep and figuring out. Because this is, what, this is what I do as a software developer. Like, when stuff's not working, especially software, you know, it's, 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 it's my job to, to figure it out. And I have to, like, go through, like, rigorous testing and really try to figure out, like, what is the issue? Like, what is causing the issue? And just start just, you know, eliminating all kinds of variables one by one by one. Until I eventually come up, until I eventually come up with a solution that actually resolves, that actually resolves the issue. <clears throat> and sometimes that, the process of just doing that is strenuous. Oh, that was dumb. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm shooting with a lot more confidence now than, than I was earlier.
Oh, that was a ball you're not supposed to bump. But you're okay. <sighs> Another satisfying end, end pattern. So, so yeah, um, I guess I'll do that. I will, I will make another, I will make a video. I, I obviously can't do it tonight. Um, but yeah, I will make a recorded video of me cleaning the Arcos 2 ball set using my diamond ball polisher. You know, obviously, I have a backstory as to why I'm cleaning them, which is this live stream and my, my poor performance. And then when I when I switched uh, my ball the ball set, then the performance started to go up a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, like, okay, cool. All right, so partially still my fault. I mean, like. You know, I, I got to be able to shoot regardless if the balls are dirty or not. I mean, if, if the rack doesn't develop, the rack doesn't develop. Fine. But I still have to be able to shoot. Which I don't think clean or dirty balls really, really matter all that much in that sense. But as far as the way the rack is behaving, it, it does matter. I mean, clearly it does matter. I think, I think we've just proven that. No, don't shoot that ball. Right, we don't want to shoot that one. Oh, well, maybe we do. <clears throat> Not the most idealistic leave to have. Ooh, I overcut it. So let's make a let's make a good burst of attempts here. Oh man, I'm at 66 attempts. I think this is the most attempts I've done on a stream. I'm still looking for a good run before I want to before I even consider calling it a night. And a good run doesn't necessarily mean that I have to break into the 50s. Of course, I would love to still break into the 50s. Look at that. That's so much better. You know, I don't really have a break ball. The 12 ball is kind of a break ball. I would end up hitting the, the bottom of the rack, you know, so I can, I can eventually maybe try to, like I can try to improve the four ball as a, as a break ball. 
that's a thing. Got a problem that I got to deal with here, which I might have to use the five ball to, to solve it, which I think I'm going to try to do right now. Let's try to get a little bit of an angle on the five ball so that way I can spin over uh, to the one and the 11 and break them apart. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> At least it looks like the 11 goes down here now. All right, so how do I improve the, the four ball? Well, if I were to shoot the 13 in, at a fairly flat angle, I can roll my cue ball up and bump the four further away, and hopefully the three ball or the seven ball um, are insurance balls that I can shoot at afterwards. And so considering that I have shape on the 12, I'm going to try to get that position on the 13. So I can do that. And I think I got it. So I'm going to gently push the cue ball forward, but hopefully bump into the four ball, kind of like that, and turn it into a break ball. Now I still got to solve this. Um, what ball am I going to use to do that? Like I might be able to use this six ball here to do that, but the, prob <laughs> the problem is going to be is what ball am I going to shoot at next? I might not have a shot next if I do that. So I have a decent shot here at the seven, which gives me a shot at the two. Yeah, I think this is probably better. Oh, really? Because I didn't want this guy to tie up. That's the only reason why I punched it so hard like that, knowing that I was going to move the 10 and I didn't want it stuck on the rail or anything like that. So six, that's a seven. Whew. All right, so now if I can just, like I said, if I can just put together a decent run, then cool. We're seeing more and more that the rack is spreading open now, which is usually what I expect. And that's that's from that's from any break angle. Even if I you know if I if I do this as a break shot or whatever, like none of the break shots were like opening the rack up like at all. But now this appears to be working. Look at that. Now that's that's just sloppy cue ball control. I don't care about that. I just like that the rack opened up. That's that's all that I really care about. Plus, I like doing shots like these for everybody. Look at that. I overcut that. <clears throat> Oh, this makes me feel this makes me feel so much better. I was really, really starting to get down on myself and is like, what in the world am I just like, am I just not playing well or what is it? So now I can now I can pretty much say like if I if I can't put up a good run now, then I can pretty much say, yeah, I'm not playing well. But gee, <laughs> how many how many hours did I waste doing that? Look at that. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So the six ball might be my might be my break ball. Gonna have to now I'm gonna have to I tried to open these these four up. Now I'm gonna have to try to use the two ball to do it, which I guess I can try to do that here ASAP, but I'm also going to try to clean up this mess down here. Remember, balls that are down here are, are troublesome as well. 
Sometimes we can use them as uh, insurance balls, which, yeah, I think I'm going to leave one of them down here. Oh, crud. Maybe I can... There we go. Ooh, if this angle wasn't so sharp, I can actually improve that 12 ball too. see here. Let's try the 14 in the side. Oh, I overcut it. Yep, I overcut it. Oh. Six. Oh, is someone asking about my uh, gym mats? Yeah, because that's certainly what these are. I just bought these off of Amazon, and it was only um, it was only just recent that I decided to buy double matted tape. So they're they're taped down, so that way they don't move because they were notorious for sliding around. Sometimes they would also start to separate. And I really didn't like seeing when they when they were separating. So when I bought the double matted tape, I had to put two strips on on each of them and then place them all down nice and snug. So now they won't go anywhere. <clears throat> I don't even I don't even mind this. <laughs> this is kind of cool though. This little triangle. Like I basically I don't know, like how in the world did I hit this to where basically I I knocked um the the triangle corners out and left the middle triangle in like that's to me that's kind of an an odd phenomenon All that, and I only knock one of them loose. Do, 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 do. That was probably not smart. Ugh. Oh, especially since I would love to leave that two ball alone, but I got to shoot it. Unless y'all would get mad at me that I, that I jump over the two and make the 10. Uh, but we're not, we're not going to do that. Let's see if I can cut the two. <laughs> what is this all about? Come on. Ow. Oh, I almost made it. Look at that.
And even though the, the, the town chalk that I use is very clean on the cue ball, but when you do miss cue, uh, let's see, I hope everybody, I, I don't know if you can see it. I can't tell. Maybe not, but it's right next to my fingertip, the, the chalk residue that gets left on the cue ball whenever you miss cue. And so you certainly want to clean that off uh, because you don't want that to come into play during any part of your any part of your uh, game. All right, enough is enough. Now, now we're just now we're just shooting bad. Now, now I've got no excuses. So enough is enough. <clears throat> That didn't work out. Not the way I wanted to, at least. <laughs> Neither did that. Couldn't even get shape on the 15. All right, so we're going to cross bank the four ball. Oh, gosh. How long have I been playing? Oh, I'm going on a five-hour stream right now. What time is it? It's midnight. It's tomorrow. This is where I basically just got lost in everything now that I've now that I've come to this conclusion <clears throat> all right so I think we're gonna try a few more attempts and then we're gonna call it a night there we go don't try to force the rack open just let it open Ah, that was supposed to bump into the 13 ball, so that way the 13 ball moves right here to become a break ball. That would have been an intentional bump. At least that's what I was trying to do. Ugh, that was That was just silly of me.
So now I'm going to have to try to use the six ball to bump the um, the three ball in place, kind of like what I did before on, I think, yeah, it was a rack that I didn't finish. I talked about create creating a break ball, and I did, but then I, I messed up somewhere in the rack. So like, I think right here, I can try to get the position I need on the six. That ain't gonna do it. I think I hit that way too soft. Yep. So now I gotta try to get there again. So this is what I don't wanna do is keep pecking off um, all the balls off the table, trying to create this break ball. And I'm still on the wrong side. So the silly part is I finally got there, but if I shoot it now, I have to bank something. So like that, this is the this is the bad part about doing everything I just did. So now I might use this as a break ball. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. So this is where I have to set up a shot where I'm going to cut the seven ball in, have the cue ball come off the rail, and then try to bust open the rack. I've done break shots like these before. They're not easy. Oh, especially if I screw them up like that. I was trying to go deep into the corner. This is going to be fun. Let's see what I can figure out here. I was trying to make sure that I spin the cue ball deep into the corner and then spin its way back out um, so I can have the cut shot on the seven ball that I wanted. This is going to be fun. Let's see what I can do with this. Oh man, it it would almost seem like I have to cut this in the side pocket just to flare the cue ball pretty darn hard. Because I don't want to cut it in the corner because then I have to really blast the ball. If I cut it in the side, I got to make sure I avoid these points. So I think that's what I'm going to try. Side pocket. If I'd have just made the ball, that would have been beautiful. If I'd have just made the ball. I 
Well, now you know how you can get longer streams out of me. If I start the stream with the uh, the AirPods uh, for an hour or two, and then I can use uh, these for a couple more hours. Beautiful. So if you haven't done so already, please give the please give the stream a thumbs up. I did a whole lot of struggling here just to figure out that I need to clean the Arcos uh, set of balls. <clears throat> so now you can see I turned the seven ball into a break ball, so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to maintain it if I can. Oh man, because I was really pulling my hair out over the over this one as to why the rack just would not spread open. And here I was thinking it was because of me drawing the 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 outline. Like that that just happened to be a, a coincidental coincidental uh, event or circumstance. When it's like, no, after you've done Eves, you should probably know the answer to this. How many hours of straight pull have I done with all my live streams by now? After I've done so many hours of uh, live streams of playing straight pull with the with that Predator um, Arcos 2 ball set. You can probably imagine how dirty they are. <laughs> Do, do, do. Oops. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Ah. All right, no big deal. I was asking it for it to stop so that way I can just stun over. And actually, I don't like this cut angle. All right, let's see here. Whew, that's a thin cut shot. Wish the cue ball was like right here. Let's 
See, just just being in the second rack is so satisfying. I don't even care if I get out of the second rack now. Just being in it and, and the the break worked. Like that is so satisfying. Let's see here. <clears throat> do, 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 do. do I want to shoot that or do I want to shoot that 12? Because that's the 12 is pretty much what I set up for. Or do I want to try to reposition myself on the 12 using this ball? Yeah, now my now my angle isn't um, as sharp as it was. And the twelve is a, a great break ball, but I got to use it for this. Oh, that's just gross. Fifteen in the corner. Golly, that was a loud meow. Y'all probably didn't hear that. Fifteen in the corner. Oh, man, look at that thirteen ball. That thirteen ball is so good, but it's going to get moved. I don't have a shot after this. I mean, well, I mean, I have to make shots after this, so I have to move everything. This game hates me. This game literally hates me. Thirteen ball, corner pocket. Ah, okay. So there was at least a decent run. So six plus nine, that's 23. <clears throat> so note to self, pretty much after each, each live stream, clean the ball set. And everybody in the live chat's probably like, duh. <laughs> here, I, here I am learning it the hard way. That wasn't the greatest of results. This little candy cane that I created. I'm 
to figure out what to do here. Like, I'd love to try to figure out how to turn that 15 ball into a break ball if I could. But right now, it's looking like maybe the two ball is going to have to be a break ball. Yeah, see the f the 15 ball is in a spot now, but it's 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 too high on the rack. It could be I more ideal if it was right here. I mean, I could probably still use it, but I like I still like the two ball better because of the distance that it has. But considering I have to move the nine and the four out of the way, I might end up defaulting back to the to the 15 ball. We'll see, especially after what's going to happen on this shot. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. You know, and here I did make the two ball become a break ball, but now I don't have a shot. Ah. <sighs> Like the stream just for that damn shot. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, I'm just, I'm just gonna have to make do with this. Like the stream just for me getting out of the rack with that with that shot on the two ball. Come on, folks. Oh, gosh. I hope I can hit that 10 ball, but I obviously hope I can make the 15 first. And do I have a shot afterwards? I don't. Ah, uh, I mean, unless I want, no, I can't even, I can't even cut the, I can't even cut the eight ball. <laughs> this is so brutal. <laughs> Let's see. The nine ball doesn't combo. I mean, I could combo the three or maybe combo the seven. <sighs> You've got to be kidding me. This game hates me. Three ball, corner pocket.
How am I going to break up that cluster? Ooh, if I was, if I was just a little bit further over here, this ball would be perfect so I can use it. Let's see, maybe if I reposition from the one to the four, and then from the four to here. Never mind. Well, maybe. 10 balls here. Use the ten ball. Let's get the eight ball out of the way so that way the nine and the six are easier. Easier. And oh man, if I had, I mean, I'm still gonna, the 14 ball is my break ball, but if I had to put a little bit more thought of it, I might have been able to turn the nine ball um, into a break ball. Here for the five. It's gone off the rail for the nine. Uh, probably just a little bit of a stun for the two. And we do that so we can do a two railer to come around for the 14. I can I can also do a, I can get away with a one railer actually. I don't have to do a two railer. A little bit of top left. Kind of like that. <clears throat> So what'll what'll more than likely happen when I cut this stream off? I'm gonna clean these balls because I'll end up using these balls again uh, for the next stream. So that way I can save the Arcos two balls um, to be cleaned for the the recorded video. All right.
Right now I'm trying to think about my break ball, which is looking like the eight ball, maybe. Did I just, I thought I was going to draw through that. Oh, so I was trying to get position on the, I mean, I have position on the nine. It's just not ideal. And actually the 11 ball is not bad either. The only problem is that when I shoot the one, I'm going to move the 11. So do I want to shoot the nine? Because I can. Maybe I should. Oh, six ball. Why did you have to do that to me? That's just rude. Oh, and the five ball's in the way because I can't shoot the six into the um, side pocket. Can't <sighs> six ball does go in the corner though, right? Yes, it does. Oh, you're playing with fire, Chris. Why'd I hit that one so soft? Okay, so. All right, yeah, I think I have to use my eight ball now because this, this route's a little difficult. Hi. Just trying to see where I need to be on the four ball. Oh, really? Not cool. Not cool at all. Why did you do that? You're supposed to be straight in. Ah, 
Whoa, get over on the other side. All right, that'll work, I think. Except now I have to, I think I have to bank this ball just to, just to use the eight as a break ball. The cut's too thin. <sighs> well, all that pain and suffering was worth it. All that pain and suffering was worth it. Let's see now. What in the world do I do with this? Like, seriously. Come on, 12. Come on, 12. Or even the 7. Oh, that 13 ball is so tight next to that six and is a lovely break ball to open the pack back up. Or to try to open the pack back up. Nope, never mind. Like that is that is so close. I don't think I can get it. So does that mean I have to try to use the 12? And if I try to use the 12. Which, oh man, I'm almost perfect to use it. I need to be basically right here to use the 12. You, ooh, even the two ball. But how do I, how do I get to the two ball? Like the, t the two ball is perfect. Like right here. And, and that, that, that allows the 14 ball to be my insurance ball. But man, get, getting over there is super risky. Is there a dead ball in the, in the cluster? I don't see one. Yeah, it might have to be the 12. I might have to try to open this back up with the 12. All right, folks, here we go. Oh, you know. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. But you know what? I, th I think that's a note uh, to end the stream on. Like all that pain and suffering to come to find out that I'm just, I had to have been playing with the, the balls are just, I guess, too, like there's too much oil or too much buildup uh, on them or or whatever. I didn't even, I didn't even break the rack open, <laughs> but switching and then finally starting to switching to a cleaner ball set. Cause all the ball sets that are over there are, are cleaned. Um, but switching to a, to a cleaner ball set finally, finally appeared to make a difference. Once I finally started to, once I finally started to get a rhythm, cause you really noticed how the, the rack would, would spread open when I did that 44. Forty-four. Oh man, like that's how terrible. But look at that. Like I said, it finally, finally. Oh, especially, especially with some of the shots that I had to do during during the, uh, during that attempt. There, man, that was brutal. That was straight up brutal. But anybody that that wonders, like, think think about this. If if you don't consider yourself as decent of a player as I am, and you know the the hard thing that you can ever do to yourself is like you go to you go to your pool hall or you go to your home table or whatever and you're like what am i going to practice on today so you try to do some practicing you know you, you try to break and run some nine ball racks break and run some eight ball racks or work or work on 
whatever it is that you want to work on. And you basically go through what I just went through, right? And it's so easy to just get so freaking frustrated at yourself that you just rage quit. Like you literally just rage quit. And I, I, I've said it on multiple occasions, like you just can't do that for one. You got to really dig deep and just really figure out what is the issue besides you're messing up, like, you know, you're missing your shots or whatever. Because look what happened to me tonight. I was just sitting there struggling or rack after rack after a rack after attempt after attempt after attempt. And you even saw that even with the Arcos two ball set, there was some, there was some rather incredible shots that I was able to pull off. So it's like, is it, is it really the, is it really possibly the balls being dirty that that's causing the issue? And I was like, well, we're, we're never going to know until, until I switched them. And then I finally switched them. And then look what, look what was happening to the rack on, on all, on almost every break shot that, that I basically have. You know, so when you find yourself struggling in your practice attempts, in your competitions or, or doing whatever it is, um, that, that you're, that you're doing, that you're just, you find yourself struggling at, like, don't, I mean, try to dig deep. Like, like I do, basically it's easier said than done because believe you me, I wanted to rage quit probably like a good two and a half hours ago (laughs) or something, but I'm glad I stuck through it. I'm glad I'm at least able to end the stream on this good note. All I can hope for is that my conclusion is correct. That as long as I have a clean ball set and I'm able to get those breaks, especially the opening break, then the next stream is hopefully going to at least be better than this one at, at, the, at the very least. So I'm going to clean these tonight or this morning. Haha. <laughs> I'm going to clean these this morning uh, so that way I can use them on the on the next live stream. And then I, sometime, sometime this week, um, I need to be able to uh, create um, a recorded video uh, where I can actually use, like, here, let me do this. Uh, so that way I can show y'all this guy, the, the diamond ball cleaner, and actually clean. I'll probably, I'll probably pull him out from underneath the desk uh, so I can actually um, clean, the, clean the Arcos 2 balls and stuff. So that way we can, and, and actually what I can do is I can probably take, take some clips out of uh, this live stream and show everybody like watch the racks, like watch how the racks weren't opening up. And then all of a sudden when I go grab a clean ball set, look how they open up now and then go and clean and clean the ball set and then come up over here and break the rack open with a straight, with a, with a straight pull break. Like there, there's the content right there. Like I had to sit there and think like, how am I going to, how am I actually going to make the video? Cause like you you don't want to just sit here and watch the, watch the ball cleaner, just spin around for like a good minute or two, just cleaning the balls. Like that, even, even if you did, like that's all the content would be. But now there's, there's basically like a before and after that, I, that I can actually show like the benefits of having a clean ball set. So especially if you go to a public pool hall, you know, check how often uh, the, the owners actually clean the ball sets they have um, for, for their tables. Because if you find yourself struggling on their tables, that could be one variable that you might have to that you might have to um, that you might have to fix in order to at least see better results from there. Uh, let's see, Eves. Thank you so much for the ten dollars Canadian super chat tonight. Was hard. It sure was. But you, I worked harder. Uh, let's see. Didn't work as I wanted, but that's okay. It's part of the journey. Uh, you love that. I, uh, that I never quit. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it, you know, cause I'm, I'm a stubborn person when it comes to, when it comes to stuff, you know, happening, uh, like this. And, um, I, I, I got, I got to figure it out. Like I got, I got to figure out what works. Like I got, I have to figure out what is wrong besides saying I'm just missing. Like there, there's, there's usually going to be something more than just that. Um, and I, I'm the type of person that will dig deep, um, and try to, and try to actually figure out, um, what that is. So I think I discovered it, uh, tonight. So all I can hope for is that future live streams, um, are going to be, or future attempts are, go- are going to be better. So yeah, I'm going to call it, uh, for the evening, um, reminder that, um, like I said, I, I, I still believe I have to work this weekend, so I don't think I can go live this weekend to do my giveaways. I'm going to give away both the the um, the Poison Package and the Predator BK Rush. Um, 
to, to two different winners. <laughs> it's not going to go, it's not going to go to one winner. It's going to go to two different winners. I mean, it could potentially go to this, the same winner. If the same person commented on both, on both videos and, and the, the random comment picker happens to pick that person. I mean, that's, that, that is a possibility. Um, uh, but there will be two winners, um, that that's going to be picked. Um, and, but if I have to, if I have to work this weekend, then that live stream probably will not occur until the following Monday. Um, when's the next time I'll be back to do this? Maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Um, I, I, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to get a hold of, I'm going to get a hold of, uh, key listings, um, and see, uh, when we're going to do our exhibition match, the exhibition match might as well be Wednesday or Thursday as well. It all depends. Chris Witten, you're asking me if I've seen uh, Q listings, uh, opening break. I have, it is hilarious. <clears throat> Let me see if I can replicate it before I shut the, before I shut the stream off. Cause I was actually watching him practice with a buddy. And when I saw the break, I literally went, I literally typed into his chat. WTF kind of break was that. <laughs> Because it it surprised the heck out of me. Now I don't know if I'm going to be able to replicate it because I don't know exactly how it works. Because what he does is he takes his break ball and lines it up to here, but you, I cannot freeze them because I I can't touch the rack. So I got to get as close as I can to where the combo that's going to be created when I hit the ball that's in the second row is hopefully going to send this ball straight to the pocket and just open the rack up. So let's see if this works. So 14 ball corner pocket. You know, without scratching or whatever, but that's the break. That's the break that he. I'm not going to use that. Like it's cool and stuff, but I'm I'm not going to use that. He can use it. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's competition. I I I'm I'm going to I'm going to do the uh the, the, the I'm going to break the way the, the way that I normally break. But because that obviously only be, that obviously only benefits um that obviously only benefits the the very first rack. Right. So after this, you know, like I, you still have to shoot, right. You still have to be able to, um, you know, run to the second rack, you know, blah, 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 you know, whatever. So like, it, it's a thing. Uh, we're, we're not entirely sure if it's actually legal. Um, but I mean, I'm not going to care. I'm not going to care if he does it or not. Like I, we're, we're, we're not entirely sure if it's an actual legal way of starting a high, a high run, uh, attempt, but it's hilarious. Like I, I really, uh, I really like it um uh the 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 way the way the way that it works but i'm not going to use it and like i said i i i, I it's it's not going to bother me um if he uses it okay so that's pretty much going to wrap things up uh like i said so stay tuned f uh, for either wednesday or thursday for uh most likely the next live stream um not not sure if it's going to be just me uh live streaming or maybe maybe we can try to get the um the exhibition match between me and uh, Q listings um, going here. Otherwise, that I'll just have to wait till later. So until next time, everybody, have a good night. And thank you so much for being here and watching me struggle the way that I did. Take care, everybody.